Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming here today for our Meet the Designer talk, the second of today. And it's with the wonderful sound designer, Lauren Tone, who is coming to talk, possibly to rant, uh, certainly to discuss Second Life Sound and how to get it, how to use it, why you really need to have it and all other points I hope so Lauren thank you for coming it's great to see you and uh, take it away thank you Sophia it, and uh, always a, a great pleasure to work and speak or whatever with you at any time you're such a delight and such a uh, a positive addition to the Second Life community, I have to say that, and I'm not just kissing the button. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, if, if I may, may I do an introductory uh, comment and perhaps uh, a quick rant? Sure. Introductory comment and quick rant. Go. We are off. Okay. Hi there. Gosh darn, I'm Lauren Tone, and I'm really excited to be here at SL11B, you know, where there are so many great builds, there are so many huge, beautiful graphical displays of yumminess, and so many of them are populated by no sound effects or sound effects that are completely obnoxious, inopportune, and horrible. So, here I am, great builders, wonderful builders, you're all geniuses, why do you ignore this element? Get on it. So, that's my introduction. It's true that people tend to think of sound as an after effect rather than as an integrated um, thing. But it shouldn't be, should it? We should think about sound as much as we think about vision when we're creating something. In my view, sound can often be the basis of the build that you're doing. Um, it, it it depends, but it's it's an element that you cannot that you cannot ignore, and that you should not abuse. Please. How do you mean abuse? Um, may I demonstrate? Mm, please, please, please do. She says, already wincing from that nineteen sixties music. So, for example, you have. The, the option of doing a single loop on your sim. You know, it could be waves or wind or something like that, but don't do something like this, okay? Because it's going to drive people away in screaming, droving, madness, tearing their hair out. I, I can see that. I actually think that most loops drive me mad because you, unless they're really quite complex, you can get very bored with them very quickly, you know. Oh, yes, that bird is tweeting outside yet again. Yes, and that bird tweets every 7.5 seconds and it becomes really irritating. Um, and we can discuss ways around that. Mm. Are, there, are there ways around it? Let, let's explore, explore, for people who don't know, first of all, the fundamentals of bringing sounds into Second Life. What can you and can't you do with sounds? In terms of what you can bring into Second Life, it's uh, so far very specific. It has to be a 44.1 kilohertz wave file it can be stereo or mono it has to be 16 bit so 44.1 kilohertz wave 16 bit that's your starting point so if you're bringing in that how much sound would that be i mean you're you're telling me 
figures, but I'm not really good on figures. I'm quite good with figures related to graphics. Like if you tell me you should bring in a 512, a 512, and if possible you should bring in a 256, I know what you're talking about. But when you say kilobytes and... I, I, I don't know it well enough to understand. How long a piece of sound is that? Uh, a good point that you make. Uh, number one, you are limited to 10 seconds max per sound file that you can upload into Second Life. Um, Zobiazuma correctly states that yes, it is audio CD quality, 44.1 kilohertz, 16-bit. Uh, um, if, for example, if you're trying to uh, pull part of an MP3 file into uh, Second Life, you're going to have to convert it. Um, there are numerous free pieces of software that uh, you can do to get to the proper, uh, proper uh, file format mm. that SL will allow you to upload. So, so is, are there types of, I mean, is it, it will let you upload a variety of, of image files. What about the sound files? Does it have to be a specific kind? In, in terms of sound files, it's very picky. 44.1K, 16-bit WAV file, period. Right, so it's got to be... And under, and under 10 seconds, sorry to interrupt. Right. Okay, so when you've brought that in, that that seems awfully short. I'm sure I've heard sounds in Second Life that are much, much longer than that, even without loops. How do, how do creators create that? Oh, we do that with multiple loop scripts. Um, let me dig one up for you. Hey, we've got an egg. Yeah, it will, uh, it will form itself. It's a, a wind chime set. Um, th this is just an example of what you can do with a uh, multiple loop uh, script in which you can cut up a uh, contiguous uh, um, sound event that goes for minutes. You just chop it up into nine second files and uh, then they play in order. Right. I'll start them now. You'll hear wind chimes, um, so that it's not it, it's not redundant. It it changes. You know, doesn't drive you nuts. That's and, you know, given lag, uh, it could take a while for the sounds to load for some people. But uh, you'll hear different wind chimes, uh, singing different notes. It, it's not going to drive it into your head. Actually, the sound came in for me before the visuals came in. I'm only just now getting some sort of cave thing around it. Oh, yeah. Well, the variables of Second Life, go figure. <laughs> and the chimes have been playing for a good minute. But at, at any rate... To, uh, it behind that's... us. It's obscuring you a bit, I think, in Pet's camera. Ah, okay. Well, I, I can nuke that. I, I'm just trying to make a point that... You can, if you put your mind to it, or you hire someone to do it, or whatever, um, you can have multiple loop sound scripts. It's not easy to do. It takes time, precision, and editing to do it, and then proper scripting, but it can be done. So, how long would the loop that you've got going in those wind chimes be? Uh, my default duration for any given set of uh, continuous loops is 9.566 seconds. Right. 
And so every file is 9.566 seconds, no more, no less. And how long would you, how many, how many of those sound files would you have in a script like the wind chimes? Pretty much unlimited amount. You know, for example, you could chop up and load, you know, 10 songs if you have the time and and patience and patience to do so um however there are automatic features that that help you to do that more quickly but um it, it, it's it's also in the uh programming of the script that plays in world it it can be it can become very challenging to make it work every time and as we know in Second Life, nothing works every time anyway, so <laughs> we do the best we can. Yes. But I must say I hear quite a bit of sort of consistent sounds and music, so obviously this is a, a technique that does work a lot of the time. Yes. It, if it's also uh, vital to your build to have sounds play when an avatar work, say walks into a certain area you could also have preloaders that can silently be playing the sound before the avatar gets there that will make it seamless because often when you walk into a scene with you know various sounds playing there it will take them a moment to load if they're preloaded in the area before the area you're walking into um if that makes any sense um that can help them to play more expeditious expeditiously when the avatar actually enters the scene that's brilliant to what extent would that be, something like that be script heavy though would that need a lot of scripts to organize Um, in terms of multi, uh, multi sound loops, um, the, the scripting is very low. You can, uh, as far as the numbers go, heck, they'll, they'll clock it like 0 0.24 or something like that. And, uh, we'll play any number of loops. So that's not a big issue in, in terms of, uh, uh, loop files. Right. Well, that sounds very good. I think you've got some other things to show us, so I'm going to say what do you want to tell us about as well? Well, yes, it, there are, I mean, please, in your environments, put sounds in them that will match what's going on. So you can you can put loops around different areas. Um, keep in mind, everyone, that if you have a sound coming from an object in world, it's going to generate that sound on all axes at about 30 meters. Um, so what you want to do is spread around similar sounds you know, say you have a stream. You walk down the stream. As you walk down the stream, the sound of the stream changes as the character of the stream changes. So, you know, every 30 meters you put in a slightly different stream sound. That's the very basic. Hmm. And people don't do this. They tend to just put in water. Water at at full volume, yeah. maybe three of them, and then they merge with each other and don't play properly and sound like doo doo. And, and uh, sorry, I'm going to rant again. But, do, um, please, please rant. The the loud, over loud, and and oh God, what's the word when you when sound. It doesn't really synchronize with what you're seeing, but 
that kind of disengage with water is one of the sounds that really annoys me most in Second Life. After your elevator music, your elevator music has to come top, but then the, the sounds of water. <laughs> yeah, well, when the, the problem... Oh, no, no, somebody has pushed it again. I'm going to nuke that... <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's gone. All right, uh, but but you're absolutely right. One of my pet peeves is if you have a, the same single loop. For example, you bought a waterfall, okay, and you resed three waterfalls. Each of those waterfalls has the same sound effect built in. When your sim gets rebooted, those scripts, those sound scripts will start again. And they will play those those identical sounds like hundreds of me megaseconds after each other. It's it results in what they call flanging, and it's just horribly obnoxious. It's the thing that you don't want to do. Please, people, never do this. So when you're actually putting out sounds, you should have very careful thought for how you position them. In my opinion, what you have to do when you, when you design a soundscape is as you build in each element, you know, say you have your jungle, you have a couple of jungle loops spread around, you know, over 30 meter areas. Um, then you put in random, randomly played sound effects like lions and tigers and birds doing one tweet or whatever. Um, you, you start to break it up and you don't make it redundant. Never make it redundant. Never make it, um, invasive. I think invasive is, is the word I'm looking for. You you want to enhance what is being visually given to you in a given area rather than step on top of it with too much set. Right. So... It can be, it's like, in a way, creating an invisible build, isn't it? Because you won't actually see it with your eye, but you are structuring it as carefully as the walls and paths and planting uh, of a house. Optimally, the best soundscapes I've done have been, and, and, and the best soundscapes I've seen other people do, uh, for example, Mary Adney Merlin here, um, who is visiting, um, are are not so much dependent on taking your attention, but in terms of enhancing what's going on from the bottom up. So, believe it or not, and I'm not known for my subtlety, but subtle is good when you're doing sound design on most builds. I can see that. I, I think that, that sounds very true indeed. So, what aspects of Second Life sound do you think are useful? What other aspects of Second Life sound would you like to pick up on that we should be taking note of well let's see there's always the very entertaining uh, click to play script and uh, mm -hmm. I'll give you all um, I'll, I'll put out boxes of all these scripts uh, at the end of the talk um, but here we okay the Tony later is a uh, a click to play thing so everybody in the audience click different parts of it and make it be <laughs> noise.
So that's a, you know, think along those lines. You can, you want to make your build interactive. So if people see a, a chance to click on something in your build, make it make a sound. It's easy. Go ahead. <laughs> this is amazing. This is an amazing creation. Now, in, in terms of that approach, um, I can show you another demo after people have more of a minute making funny noises here. Buster, it may come as a complete surprise to you to find that this is an animated cartoon. <laughs> this is wonderful. This is just wonderful, Lauren. Uh, and I think it could take the audience quite a while. I, and I must admit, I'm sneaking a few goes myself. Oh, please do. It, 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 that's what it's for. It's like incredibly intellectual fun. <laughs> uh, remove the incredibly intellectual part. Are you ready, eager young space cadet? But now you can you can use this same approach um, in more artistic manners as as much as I like this approach. Um, I'm going to go ahead and nuke this and mm -hmm. pop out uh, another demo that uh, our esteemed attendees can play. Uh, I don't know how many people can see what I'm wearing on my shoulder, which is actually, I'm going to move it slightly so people can see it. Um, this is actually something Lauren made for, I think, SL, SL6B. And this is a little horn coglet, which is a shoulder pet I wear. Yes, that's a... Uh... A little thing that Mad Cow Cosmos and I did. Yeah, that was a wonderful uh, year at SL60. Okay, now on I this uh, on this thing I've raised here, um, everybody just go ahead. Uh, you see the pipes there? Go click one. They all have numerous sounds built in that are uh, vaguely musical. So. You can use this kind of technology to make a a, a visitor played kind of musical environment. Um, you know that is not redundant. That does not play unless they tell it to play, and stuff like that. I remember, <clears throat> I'm going to tell a funny story. Once you, have, when you appeared on Designing Worlds, you left a soundscape in the main hall for people to play with, which was a series of globes and planets. Do you remember that one, the, the sort of solar system? Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to pick that up. Uh, that was okay. You picked it up in the end. Um, but the thing about it was that I would come in and someone would have switched one of, the, one of them on or two of them on and then just wandered away. So in the morning, my janitor job was to go around and switch off the ones that were on. And it was always the last one I touched that I had to turn off. Yes, well... With regard to uh, musical instrument stuff, uh, in-world musical instrument stuff uh, that are that is loop based, which that was, um, we can jump into that real quick. Uh, but yes, for that very reason, I would suggest that when you have certain sound elements displayed in various areas of, say, you have a sim. You know, you've got eight, eight areas. Um, isolate the sound to that area. 
if, if if sound leakage will come through is uh, do I make myself clear on that? You do. I have to say as well that parcel sound leakage is really, really good. Um, I know that they've split up the sound parcels here on SL9B and I know that someone has been talking um, on the other sim while we've been on while we've been talking here they can't hear us at all we can't hear them the parcel sound separation seems very very good there seems to be no bleed at all which I'm very impressed by yes as a hint to uh, SL11B builders who are who have video displays um, if you do video on a prim uh, the sim boundary restriction will not apply. Although it won't leak real far, it will leak over the border. Um, that's an inconvenience that I think they need to address. With, with regard to making your soundscape even cooler, you want to probably try a random sound script emitter that will say okay you're you're making your jungle you want a lion roar you want mm -hmm. a tiger you want a minor bird you want an alligator whatever but you want silences in between you use a random sound emitter to break it up so it's not so monotonous you hear different sounds at different times as you move through the different environments. And again, this will all be provided at the end of the talk. Right, so you can have sound emitters like you can have particle emitters. Or am I mistaken? No, no, very much so. Think of it in in those terms, in, in that To, uh, let me start with this. The main thing is that sound in Second Life and uh, all other virtual worlds is proximity, uh, proximity related right. to your avatar. So as you get closer to the prim or object that is emitting the sound, the volume will change. Right. You want to walk your entire build, every detail. It's you've got to be so picky about it. But in the end, it adds so much to the user experience when they arrive and when they walk through it. Mm. If if it sounds like it should. They don't even have to notice it. You can have it at half volume. It could be just an underwater rumble or a, or you know the sound of of thistles in the wind. It doesn't matter, you know, or or a re, repetitive clunking of some kind of steampunk machine. You know, it depends on the build, but yeah. You you want to really make it match the visual representation that you're putting out there. Mm. I I can think of an example where you've actually set up stuff like this, which is very very exciting. I I'm not sure if they're just your sounds, but I'm pretty sure quite a few of them are, and that's Pandora Quintessa's Asylum which has a lot of kind of creaking gates and and also mysterious half-heard sounds and doors and things like that. And it makes for an incredibly atmospheric build. It's, uh, it's something that seems to me that could be used a great deal 
in Second Life, the for you know in things like sinister role play, to have the the creak, and also you could even with proximity suggest a sound at a greater distance, so they would hear like a distant evil laughter or a distant scream. Uh, yes, in fact, I did work with uh, the wonderful um, artist Pandora on that. Um, it, it was a, a, a joy to do. It was very fun. It was very complex. Uh, we made a lot, I, I mean, a whole stew of, uh, of sound effects for that. And it mm. was creepy and disturbing and loads of fun. And I have nothing to say but good things about uh, Pandora. Yeah, she's great. She let us take over her one her sim uh, for a whole day to film the, an episode of The Blackened Mirror. And gosh, we had such fun with that. And then you and I had fun coming up with what sound a giant spider scuttling across a, a muddy pass would make. Yeah, yeah. You kind of got me on that one. It took me a while. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it's not your common or garden sound a giant spider scuttling across a muddy path, but we got there. We got there. <laughs> oh, are you kidding? You should hear some of the things I've been asked to make. But anyway. Okay. Right. Uh, I'm, no, I'm, you should. Okay, I'm, I'm going to ask, what is the weirdest sound you've been asked to make for Second Life? I can tell you the most useful sound that I've made in Second Life. I, 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 to, to be prudent, I probably shouldn't tell you the weirdest. <laughs> but, I, but I can. Not on a PG sim, eh? Yes, it is. And that probably wouldn't work. Um, but the most useful is a sound that I give away for free, of course, called silence, which it is. It is 9.566 seconds of silence. This is a very useful sound. In Second Life, when you are doing sound design on your large builds. That's interesting. And, and you'll get it for free. Because, let me explain it this way i met buddy rich the famous drummer one time i i invaded on his space and i asked him whether his drumming was based on rudiments or what was it based on and he said i base my playing on air oh that's a wonderful way to put it that it was a wonderful thing to have been told by a very cranky guy. Um, but he he made it clear. The thing is, there is sound, yes, always. There is music, yes, always. But in between, there is silence. You must have that. Or else it's not going to work at all. That's brilliant, yes. Or, yes. or you're going to drive people crazy. It's it, it makes me think of the um, when you're designing websites. One of the things that was always, always incredibly useful when you were designing websites was the one pixel transparent GIF that you could use to position things. This is back in the old days, of course, before cascading star sheets gave so much more I control. Think, but, I think I, I remember think, HTML at that stage, but boy, yeah. it's way beyond yeah. me now. Yeah, and, and you could position things exactly as you wanted them, at least against the left margin, because who could say where the right margin of the page would ever be? But you could set things up by using the one pixel square invisible prim, the transparent prim, transparent GIF, that was what it was called. And gosh, it was so useful. Uh, th 
the concept is entirely applicable. Um, it's it's the same thing with regard to sound as with regard to graphics. You know, you want it there, and then sometimes you don't. <laughs> right. So what else should we take in mind when we're creating scanscapes? The, the ultimate thing to keep in mind is you want you want to reflect as subtly as possible the background sounds you create number one the bed all the loops that have the underlying sounds that always happen in the build then you have the the random emitters and the multiple emitters that will at different times bring in different elements as avatars walk through them. Remember the spatial aspect is one of the most important. You want to have your sound source be appropriate for what the avatar sees in that sound source in that area. They walk 50 meters away, it's got to sound different. Right, yes, yes. I, I remember we uh, in, set up in our old offices uh, that started off in Costa Rica. We actually had, as you walk through part of it, you heard the sounds of the busy office working. And the other thing that it took on mind uh, there was the sound of sort of phones ringing and people answering them to give the impression of the busy office. Uh, but it, uh, now this was quite clever. When it came to night, the sounds would actually fade and you would end up with um, very quiet um, night sounds, an occasional night bird outside and the occasional phone ringing and ringing and ringing and ringing because there was no one there to answer it. It was night. The receptionists had all gone home. And I thought that that was that really helped create the atmosphere. If you were working there at night, you had the feeling that you were in an office at night. You weren't there at, in the daytime. That's a, another real easy script that I'll give to everybody here. Um, which is a uh, single loop day night script that you just put in a sound for day and sound for night um, that will even better break up your stuff so you know if you've got a forest you have a meadow sound during the day or a wind and you have crickets at night um, so I'll also provide that script it's fantastic so have you got anything else to show us? Well, there's one more area we could go into briefly, which would be in-world musical instruments. Can I do that real quick? Yes! Oh, yes, please. I love your musical instruments. And to prove it, I'm going to play my horn conklet. Okay, <laughs> yes. Oh, it, it might be out of tune. Oh, it's definitely out of tune. It's definitely out of tune. I'll let me stand real quick and I'll uh, head. Oh out my god, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, I'll turn it on and start playing drum. And maybe a little bass, um, and some sound effects. Let's see if that starts playing for anyone.
This is a loop-based uh, music machine that you can change loops in. I, I have not opened it up for everybody to change. I'll just do a quick demo. So given my uh, uh, current settings, I'm not sure how, how well everybody can hear it. Look at that, that it sounds wonderful. Should give you an idea of how proximity works when the, uh, the prim that is emitting the sound moves closer or farther from you. And that's the intent of this demo. that but anyway um, you know any of a number of ways that you can enhance your build for God's sake just put sound in you know and that's my that's my request that's all I ask.